prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also live it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I will be reading to you from Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 through 28 from the New International Version. And the word of God reads this way. Therefore say to the Israelites, this is what the sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the sovereign Lord, when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Creator Jesus Christ, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Creator God, as you, your Son, and your Spirit are one, we bask in the greatness of your glory this morning. We come before you seeking peace, seeking wisdom, seeking light and love as only you can provide for us. 
We go through our lives day to day, sometimes existing, sometimes seeking, sometimes knowing, sometimes with the need of knowledge. But we go, Lord, hopefully, holding your hand. So now, Lord, as we listen to these, your words, we ask that we would be changed, that we would be renewed, that we would be transformed into something better, something new, something useful for you. As I've been the one chosen to bring forth this word today, I ask that you would hide me behind the cross. And the only thing that is seen and heard is of you in your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our text today is John 3, 1 through 15. John 3, 1 through 15. Listen now for a word from the Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can any, anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. We are on our last round of our sermon series. Transitions, truth, and transformation. We go through transitions in life, we go through truth in life, and we go through transformations in life if only we allow for it. Here this week, Glenda transitioned to a vacation. And the truth of the matter is our bulletins all befuddled. <laughs> but we transform by communication and heavenly nods and up her affirming eyebrows. Transitions. I've been going to church all my life, except for that little bit of time I was at Appalachian State. We are not going to talk about that. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is, I've never been to church at 10 o'clock in my life. <laughs> and I was sitting at my bar at the kitchen table when Heather said, man, it's 10 o'clock. I'm like, oh! <laughs> 
But by next week, I will have transformed. <laughs> and I'll be here early. <laughs> the truth is freeing, is it not? When we talk about today in this familiar text, the truth of the gospel. What is the truth of the gospel? Is it forgiveness? Is it justification? Or is it regeneration? Very much as we speak about today, transformation. What is it? Our story, our biblical story today can apply to a person, a business, a mission, or church. We can hear it collectively, or we can hear it individually. So we learn about this guy, Nicodemus. Who is Nicodemus? Nicodemus is a holy man. He's a higher up, if you will. He's a Pharisee, a good Jewish brother who knows his texts backwards and forwards. He's lived a good life. He's that type of person that you're proud of if you know him, if he's a friend, if he marries one of your kids. Nicodemus is a good guy. He's a good guy. But he comes to Jesus. But look what our text says. He comes to Jesus by night. Why do we come to things or to people or the activities by night. Maybe we don't want to get seen. Maybe we're flying under the radar a little bit. Maybe there's a truth we know that we don't want everybody else to know. Maybe we're hiding if we come to Jesus by night. In the darkness. By night he came. Because he had to worry about perhaps what his regular crew thought. He's this guy who's got it going on, they say. But yet and still, there's something missing. He's got the big house, he's got the fancy car, he's got high position, he's well known, he's pretty popular. But something is missing. He can't quite get the bullet points to line up. But he's heard about this man we call Jesus. So he goes to see Jesus on the DL. You know, sneak in here. Can I talk to you, Jesus? Can I see you a minute? Don't want my crew to see me coming to talk to you. And Nicodemus says to Jesus, I understand your message. I get it. But I got it going on over here, so I can't be, you know, honest about it necessarily. Can't talk about it out in public. But I know, I know that there are things that I cannot do, all things, as a matter of fact, without the power of God. But I can't let my crew know that. But he came because he, he was doing great. You know, you look at some people from the outside looking in and you say, Woo, they've got it together. They've absolutely got it together. And you say, when I grow up, I want to be just like them. And you might be already 50 years old. But when I grow up, I want to be just right like them. I'm doing pretty good. But you know, there are a couple of holes in my life, and if I can just fit Jesus into those holes, I'll be made whole. Got a different spelling on there. But I've got a few holes in my life, and I'm missing a few steps. But if I just go see this man named Jesus, he can be the putty in my cracks and stop my jar from leaking. So he goes to Jesus, and he's saying, I know you're a man of God, and I appreciate the work you've done in the community, Jesus, and 
I just wanted to have a little chat with you this evening, and I just wanted to talk to you about a few things I've been working on. Jesus says, stop, Nicodemus. Hush. And he looks at him and said, unless you are born from above, from the heavens, it will be all right. It will not be all right. You know me. You know my work. And you know you need me to do what you need to do, but you keep doing it yourself. You've got to be born again, Nicodemus. you got to start all over, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus just scratches his head and says, Excuse me? What do you mean? Jesus said, let me say it to you this way. There is a guy. He's been working in this business for 20 years. It's a very successful business. He's got all these employees. The business is getting stronger and stronger. He's about to do an IPO. And you come to me to say, can you help me with this spreadsheet? Jesus said, it's all wrong. What do you mean it's all wrong? I've got it going on. People want to be like me. What do you mean it's all wrong? It's like going to a fitness instructor who's all the rage. So you can look just like me. This is what Nicodemus is doing, trying to look just like Jesus without putting in the work, without emptying himself of himself so Jesus could fill the spaces of his body, of his mind, of his soul, of his spirit. This was shocking news to him. This was devastating news for him. The truth of the gospel is a radical transition in who we think we are. It's a radical change. It's giving up the things we think we know. It's giving up the things that perhaps have given us success in life in accordance to man, in accordance to woman, in accordance to society, but not in accordance to God. He says, Nicodemus, you needed a new business plan, son. Your business plan didn't and doesn't and never did include me. That's why it won't really do what you needed to do. Because you have to go through me, Nicodemus. But let's go back to this, this born again, Jesus. What are you talking about? I cannot crawl back up into my mother's womb. And if I did, she'd probably slap me. I'm old. What's that mean? I'm old, Jesus. I can't do that. Finish the sentence. I'm old and I'm stuck in my ways. I'm old and I really don't want to do anything differently. I'm old and this has been working pretty well for me. That's just a few more things I need. I'm old and I really don't believe an old dog can learn new tricks. Because these tricks have been working for me. If they are, why are you in my face, Nicodemus? Why do you keep coming to me, Nicodemus, if you've got all of the answers? What did Jesus not say? He did not say, Nicodemus, it's up to you. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Let's get it done. He didn't say that. Nor did he say, it's up to God. He didn't say that either. He didn't say anything about being elect or predestined. Come on, John Calvin. He didn't say that. He said, water and spirit. 
baptized in the water, baptized in the spirit. There are different understandings of what that water may mean. It may mean nature or it may mean literal baptism. But what we do know, it's about a change. It's about a cleansing. It's about letting go of those things that we think hold us up. He keeps, he goes on in, in chapter 6. Flesh can only get fleshly things. Oh, that's powerful. We can only do what we can do. We only know what we know. We are limited by our minds. God is not. So, deductive reasoning would tell us Perhaps we don't need to depend so much on ourselves because we are limitless. Limit. We are limited. God is limitless. Make a choice. Are you going with limited? Are you going with limitless? When you say, I got it going on, we are limiting ourselves. When I say my business has it going on, we are limiting ourselves. When I say my church has it going on, we are limiting ourselves. We are opting for a limit-filled existence. But with God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. Flesh can only get fleshly things. What's of the flesh? Things we create are fleshly things. We cannot create a flower. We can only plant the seed. We need God's help to make that fleshly activity something marvelous. Fleshly things can only get fleshly things. Nicodemus, why are you so shocked? Did you really think you were all that wonderful? Did you believe your own hype, Nicodemus? And Nicodemus is still standing there. I don't get it. I don't get it, Jesus. The world is telling me I'm doing awesomely well. Jesus says you can't control the wind and you can't control God. We don't have control over certain things in our lives no matter how hard we try. This is where trust and faith in the Holy comes. We see transitions in our lives all the time. Some of us are living in transition right now. All day. All the time. And we don't know what the, uh, the outcome will be. But we serve a God who knows. We serve a creator who knows. And when we go out, we call ourselves disciples of Christ. And we go out and preach the gospel. We go out and tell people why we love Jesus so much. And we go into the text. It says, unless you are born again, you cannot, we use the word saved, though that's not what the text says. Unless you're born again, you can't be saved. Saved from what? The world is full of crud. We can't be saved from that. But that's not the gospel if that's all we're telling people. We're telling people they're diseased and we're not giving them a cure. And you keep listening to this and the deeper you get, it seems like there's no way out. Reverend Colin Smith says it this way. If that's all we tell people, that you must be born again, you're simply giving them a statement of the problem to which the gospel is the answer. That's not good enough. Here's the point. Jesus is different. We were all born 
But Jesus came down from heaven to be with us, to teach us, to show us, to love us, to offer us peace in a way that only Jesus can. And Jesus descended. Jesus is different. Jesus is not like us. He was 100% human, like us. But he was 100% divine, unlike us. So Nicodemus is still standing there a bit confused. I already told you Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He knew his Bible backwards and forwards. So Jesus brought it back to Numbers 21 for him. Remember Moses? The people in the neighborhood got a little rowdy. They got mad at Moses. They got mad at God. And they cursed God. And God said, okay. So he let the anacondas go. Snakes everywhere. People were dying. The world was corrupt. We had bad leadership. We had irresponsible decisions being made at the top. We had people using people as pawns for selfish gain. We had people not loving one another as themselves. We had people ostracizing others because they were different. We had people naming what leprosy is and pushing people to the margins of life. We had people telling people who they could and could not love. We had people telling people they weren't good enough. We had people telling people that they didn't deserve an education. We had people telling people that you don't deserve equal rights because you're not a whole human being. And we wrote laws to support that. Snakes everywhere. God said, Moses, go make a snake out of brine and erect out of a brine, out of bronze and erect it. And those who look upon that statue will live. If we go a little further in our pericope today, it says in 316, everybody knows 316. For God so loved the world, say it with me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look on that bronze snake and live. Believe on Jesus Christ and live. He gave Nicodemus a parallel. It's hard, folks, sometimes to let the things of the past go. It's hard not to weigh ourselves in accordance to society. It's hard not to think more of ourselves than we ought. It's difficult because we live with one another. We see each other every single day. We have a television and the internet to dictate to us what is good and what is not. But Jesus told Nicodemus like he told us, if you are going to enter into a transformational journey of life, you have to trust and believe on the cross of Calvary and let Jesus be your God. And when we are able to do that, O cursed, there won't be cracks in our armor. There won't be holes in our souls to fill. We won't have to worry about going to Jesus at night or when nobody's looking or when it's convenient for us because we'll know that's where we needed to be in the first place.
If we are truly and deeply seeking transformation in our lives, we will move out of the way and let the Creator do what the Creator does. In order to transform into a healthy, vibrant colony of people, it is mandatory for us to look upon Jesus Christ. And that is where we will find utter, amazing, awesome, transforming life. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we prepare to sing our hymn of discipleship, Breathe on me, breath of God. That's a prayer, actually. In the Hebrew, the word for breathe, or breath, or wind, or spirit is ruach. That which moves us. Jesus told us we can't control the wind, but it's going to move whether we move with it or not. So as we accept and live into the power of the Ruach, we pray our prayer together. Breathe on me, breath of God. If you're looking for a church home today, you have an opportunity to join Oakhurst. This is not an altar call. This is an opportunity to join this body of Christ. It's an invitation to join this body of Christ. Jesus needs us to live into the call that he has put on our lives as Oakhurst. It's an opportunity to give with your life what has been given to you to become a true disciple. So if you're looking for a church home today, is an acceptable day. You may come at this time during the singing of this hymn where Heather will welcome you or you may go to our website and contact us that way. But now is an acceptable time to join this congregation. Won't you stand and join me in singing I Have Decided to um, Breathe on the Breath of God 286.
please be seated. We've had the opportunity to come with our physical selves to the body of Christ for which we are thankful. Of to a brother and a sister, not in Jesus to come forth today and we will meet them in just a moment. But now we have an opportunity to give of our tithes and offerings to support the mission and ministry here at Oakhurst and to live out the call of Jesus Christ on our lives here at Oakhurst. So we ask that you would give generously as our ushers come.